Hello everybody, welcome to another video of Andrew and Nicole. Today we're going to assemble all the PC components that I recently got. Now this is a three-part series video. Part one wherein I unbox all of these components and I describe everything. You can check it out, links in the description and of course I put it here in the cards up. Uh, up. So please do uh, check it out. And of course we have part three later on for the after all the assembly we install Windows and all the softwares that we, we will be needing. All right, so let's go and assemble this rig. Welcome back. So let's go, we're going to build a computer today. Before we begin, I'd like to share some tips on how to build a computer, at least the preparations before you build a computer. All right, first tip is you have to prepare all the components on your workspace so similar to this one I put everything at least in my arms reach on the table so that you can easily grab whatever you need now put in all the necessary cables the screws the, the parts and of course you have to bring a screwdriver you only need a screwdriver a Phillips screwdriver to be able to build a computer now I, I got this from the be quiet cooler so good thing this is also magnetic a magnetic screwdriver is helpful so that whenever you put screw it will not fall down uh, on the component number three also try to read the head of the instructions manual so also bring the instruction manual with you on your build table on your workspace so that you can reference on it in case you have any questions number four you prepare your power source and other peripherals now we have here the monitor and the extension and of course the keyboard and mouse on the, on the table so that after you build you can easily test it out also you can prepare your software bios now depending on your motherboard you might need to update your bios the bios is the operating system of the hardware now you can check your manufacturer's uh, data or software support so you can check how to to do the bios update now we will try to assemble this motherboard without updating the BIOS. Just in case it won't work, we'll do it updating and we'll also video that for you. And of course, if you're building your computer, the components are sensitive to static electricity. So it's better that you would build your computer on a solid ground, no carpet to prevent static shock and of course, frying your component. All right, with that, we will be coming closer and we'll be building the computer one by one and I'll do the step by steps uh, for you. So let me just give you a quick rundown of all the components that I have prepared in front of you. Now I have here the X570 MSI Tomahawk Wi-Fi, this one. And my graphics card is the Palette Gaming Pro RTX 3070. My power supply is a Seasonic 850 watts gold 80, 80 plus gold certificate certification PSU. We have a Be Quiet uh, Dark Rock 4 cooler for my CPU. We have our memory, the Trident Z RGB 32 gigabytes of memory. We have the Ryzen 5800X, the new 5000 series of CPU from AMD. And for my storage, I have here the XPG SX8200 NVMe PCI3 uh, storage. All right, so before we begin, it is good to, to test your power supply this came out of the factory, but just in case for any factory defect, we will be able to detect it as early as now so that you will not be a hassle to prepare everything and find out that your power supply is not really working. Okay, for Seasonic, it's very easy. It came with a instruction. They have a certain, uh, they call it uh, a short, short, this is a adapter that shorts the, the power supply and allows you to test it. Okay, let me... Let me show it to you again. So check your PSU manual for that. And make sure to push in if you have a Seasonic. This is a hybrid mode. Make sure it's turned off, setting to normal mode. And plug in the power. 
plug in the power and you can turn on the switch okay if the fan rotates it means the power supply is working then you can begin your assembly is it turn it's because I didn't power on my extension cord so did it turn okay so it means my power supply is working okay does it smell any uh, smoke all right let me turn it off okay so now we have to begin working with our components outside of the case for easier access so first off we work on with the motherboard so you can come closer with the video so first off we're going to install the cpu the ryzen 5800x cpu now to do that uh, this is the ryzen cpu okay so it, be very careful because this is very delicate the back portion the pins are very are very uh, easy to bend if you bend it it's gonna be uh, brick so just be careful okay now I would I will open it okay first we have to open this tab now you will not see it because it's far but there is a triangle here uh, at the corner so that means that is the orientation or at least that's the side to match the CPU the CPU also has a triangle so let me just show you after I open it okay so as you can see here there's a triangle in the corner unlike the other corners no triangle so this one goes with this side okay so now with these chips there is no pressure needed it just slots in no need to press so make sure it's neatly uh, snug once it's snug you just pull down the lever and you have installed the CPU easily all right now this CPU doesn't come with a uh, default cooler so these brackets are actually for the default cooler so since we're not gonna use this one we're gonna use the be quiet cooler okay so this one will be the the, the, the cooler that we'll be using for for this processor so we have to remove this and install the custom brackets of the, uh, the cooler so use your screwdrivers make sure to remove all of these you have to keep the screws because if you will be selling your motherboard you have to provide those components to the buyer okay so keep everything don't lose it put it on the side I have a small bowl to keep everything in 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 intact okay, so remove the brackets now there, there are stands up here okay so make sure to check your motherboard uh, your cooler so for this particular one it's AMD this is for the AM, AMD socket so you have two piece of this one and these standoffs and screws so you have these standoffs that you need to put here Actually, we can put in the the grommets or grommets. And put in the standoff standoffs okay so now 
in the be quiet there is actually a label so there's an AM4 so since we are using the AM4 socket your, your screw should go to that slot okay so this way it should orient this way So you don't have to tight it very tight or at least just, just make sure it, it's snug and okay I think I got it so next now make sure to remove this one this is the the warning label of course you have to remove this if you want to install it you have to remove this one okay so just checking the right orientation okay these are the fan mounts so we are gonna use only one one set rather and you have the this is just screw. Okay. All right, we're now ready to peel this off. To peel off. Okay, but first we put the thermal paste. This is a compound wherein you will be putting in your Ryzen CPU at least in any CPU this will conduct the heat and move the hot hot uh, dissipated in the heat sink and of course a fan will blow it away do it you can use your own thermal compound but I just use the default one provided by be quiet so we so we peel this off make sure right orientation and you have this bracket this will hold the the cooler insert it in the middle Make sure it's in the right, right angle, and you use the screws provided. Now it's good. It's better that you tighten it up. So tighten it up slowly so that the thermal paste would be distributed evenly. Then use your screwdriver. Just slowly tighten up from left to right. Once it's tight, it's already enough. Make sure not to
And now we install the fan. Okay, so the CPU fan, the CPU fan header will be located here. So make sure that your CPU fan, at least the wiring, is uh, will reach it properly. Okay, so the orientation of the fan should be like this. The fan, the wind, the wind will be coming from here, blowing to the to this to this end. Okay, so let's install it. The next one is we're going to install the RAM. This is my RAM kit. Okay. So the RAMs are located, the RAM kits will be installed in these slots. Now, uh, according to the motherboard, to uh, enable dual channel, we'll be using the second and fourth slot. Now, if you would notice, there are there is a certain notch here, okay, a notch to make sure that you would correctly place your module on the right order, right orientation. So you have your RAM here. So as you can see, there's a notch here and the notch here. So it should be the other way around. Okay. So to install, you just have to. push it slightly until it locks okay you won't be able to insert it if you put it in the wrong orientation okay so that's the RAM so now we're going to install the XPG a data NVMe this one one terabyte storage actually in this motherboard you can install two one here and one here okay if i'm not mistaken both of them are running at pcie gen 4 so uh, no need to worry but my my S nvme is actually just gen 3 so for now it doesn't matter next time in my future upgrade i'll be able to upgrade to a gen 4 storage so remove the screws okay So remove the heat sink. Okay. The screws are, are easy to lose, so be careful. Okay. So the way to install the the NVMe is you have to check the notch. Okay, so here. So that way install it and press it okay so there's a provided screw by the motherboard okay just get one okay very small screw just get one and install okay. press it down and try to line it up. Mm. Okay, once it's uh, tightly secured, you can Okay, 
So once it's tightly secured, then it's already installed. Now you have to remove the the sticker to make sure it it will con contact the NVMe drive. So put it like that. Okay, the screws here. Okay, this one. So once it's nicely tight, okay, you have already installed your NVMe. Okay. Now, what we can do is we can actually install the graphics card out of the box and try to boot it up for, for setup just to make sure it will work and be able to see if it will post. Now, if not, then too bad. We have to troubleshoot. If, if it works, then we can already put it in our case. So with our power supply, with our power supply, we can connect it already after we install the graphics card. So to install the graphics card, we just have to make sure this notch is down and insert the graphics card like this. Okay. So currently it's just on the on the motherboard case. We can actually power this up and and plug all the necessary supplies. So you have your power supply. We first turn it off to make sure no stray voltage. Okay, so we plug it in. This is this this is the 24 pin 24 pin so plug it here this is for the CP the the, C, the motherboard and this is this power is for the CPU plug it here on this side this side we are doing the test out, outside of the case just to make sure everything will boot up hopefully okay without a problem if not, we have to do a BIOS flashback. Mm -hmm. Make sure, it, make sure it, everything clicks. Okay. Now we also have to put in power to our GPU. So find the PCIe connect connector for the for the GPU. So we have a PCIe, PCIe, and this is the other end connected to your power supply. So you need two of these because we have two 8-pin connector here. Plug one side to your graphics card. Okay. Okay. So this graphics card requires two. Oh, by the way, we have to remove this. Okay, don't forget, remove it. So the other end connected to your PSU. So you have to find the right PSU. So you have here the peripherals, PCIDE. We're not gonna connect it there. We're gonna connect it here, PCIE. So, so you have to connect it here, PCIE. So we have two of those. Okay, so there connect everything everything is here on connected already I hope now we're going to test it out with our monitor so actually you can you can turn on if you don't put it in a case you can turn on your motherboard if you short up two pins no so this one we have here a power this is where you put in the power uh, switch, no? So, so this is where you short it out, these two pins. 
it will turn on supposedly your motherboard. Okay. There you go. So it turned on. So we're gonna find out if we have any post. We were able to turn it on, but there's no display and a debug LED here. What does it say? CPU. Oh, it means our BIOS is not yet supported for the the 5800 so we have to do a we have to do a BIOS flashback okay so we turn it off first okay so again I have prepared a a USB drive here I already prepared a, a BIOS flashback uh, software here I'll teach you in another video how to do that. Okay, basically is you have to download the software BIOS from the, the MSI site. Then you have to rename the file, uh, save it into a USB uh, thumb drive, format it into FAT32, and rename it the file as MSI.rom. Okay, so I already save it here. Okay, hopefully the BIOS flashback would work and we'll have a running system so that we can put that put all of these in the fractal design defined case now to do that it's very simple okay so let me just unplug this first okay. so to do that is we have to find the the usb this one uh where is it this one it says BIOS flashback okay so you insert your USB thumb drive here insert okay USB thumb drive here okay and there's a button here that would uh, allow you to flash or update your BIOS to the latest one uh, the one in saved in this file okay so you press it press it and supposedly it will light up and do the update okay let me just try to make sure it's in okay so so all you have to do is of course turn on make sure your power is on okay you don't even have to turn on your your computer so get a small screwdriver and press this one there it's blinking so uh, you can see the motherboard is blinking so this one should run for about five minutes so we're we'll going to wait and see later on just keep the video rolling and make it let's see if it's gonna finish okay so we're gonna try to do the BIOS flashback because the system did not post did not boot up so i already prepared a usb uh, this is actually a third usb that i've been trying to use it to in the bias flashback so so what you can do is just uh, keep the power uh, 24 pin the cpu power uh, plug okay you can leave everything in this then make sure it's open your power supply and insert the usb to the right location and it should be the bottom one okay so now we press the bios flashback there it's recognized so it's now blinking so it's now reading now it's doing the bios flashback yes now we have to wait around five minutes to make sure uh, the BIOS flashback is working so the problem I had is the USB drive that I used is probably incompatible with the MSI motherboard so we just have to wait until this one is finished 
and it will take around five minutes so let's leave it and we'll fast forward the video for you All right, so after the BIOS flashback uh, gave me a little heart attack, now we're able to, to boot up in the BIOS screen in the MSI uh, motherboard. At least it, it, it shows that the uh, BIOS was able to successfully update the, 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 the UEFI system. And now we are able to uh, at least confidently say that it, everything has been working well so far in this junction. Now, what we're going to do next is going to disassemble some of these and put it in the Define 7 fractal case that I got. And hopefully, everything will go on smoothly. Here we have here the fractal design Define 7 PC case. Now, we're going to put all the components here in this big box. Now, before we begin, I'd like to show you the comp some of the components here inside. Now, we have included three 140 millimeter fans. So, one, two, three. These are two intakes and one exhaust. And you have the motherboard standoffs here. So everything should be located uh, neatly. And we're going to screw in the motherboard here in this place. Okay, so the power supply will go here at the bottom. So we'll, we'll put it uh, one by one. So this is the motherboard. So make sure you line up the I.O. IO panel at the back. So make sure you have the right uh, alignment. And we have here the screws provided by Fractal Design. So we'll be using a uh, this kind of screw for, for mounting the motherboard. So we have around eight, eight mounting points. Okay, I think we finish mounting and tightening all the screws. That should be correct. Okay. So next we're going to route the cables for the power supply. So remember my C-Sonic, it's fully modular. So the good thing about this one is we can actually uh, uh, adjust all the mountings, all the, all the cables, and you'll be able to see there. Uh, So this is the back of the case. So you have the power supply mounting here. And all of these cables are for your IO ports. So we're going to remove those and, and at least find the proper routing. We'll do the proper cable management later. Okay, so more importantly, we have first to put in the power supply and the, ne and the necessary cables for, for that. So when you put in the power supply, the exhaust should be facing the floor if your computer has uh, exhaust at the bottom if not usually just exhaust on, on top no so since my fractal design case has a exhaust at the bottom 
So this fan will pay, be facing the bottom. Okay, now we're going to mount the power supply. So you have to first take out all of these. This is the bracket. So this is the uh, EC, EC installation bracket. And you have here the PSU. So what you do is you put screws here on the four corners. Okay, make sure they are aligned. Okay, so we're going to mount all of these uh, screws here. So using this, these provided by Fractal. So we're going to first remove the cables uh, or maybe maybe we don't need to remove the cables. So just get everything here. Okay. So all of these cable cables will be we'll be doing the routing later on. Um, we will co be connecting it one by one. Okay. Just put it outside first. Now, let's do this. So we will be, this is the motherboard cable a while ago. So what you can do is make sure your, uh, you are routing it in the right, the nearest uh, uh, route, no? Okay, uh, the good thing about this case, you can actually pop open this top. So you can have an easier time mounting it. For that cable. So this one should go like this. Make sure the cables are all neat and tidy. The back, and we're going to install our graphics card. But before that, let's install the different headers, okay, of this PC. You have to check which header, okay. Uh, Many headers are located at the bottom, so you have to uh, route it properly. So let's start with the big one, the USB cable. The next one is we have the different switches, the power LED, the Reset button, so we have to check the motherboard. This is going to be harder. This is for the USB-C uh, header for your case. So we have to plug it here.
a few moments later. So now we're going to install the graphics card, the RTX 3070 to the motherboard. Uh, if you notice, I already moved this to the storage layout. So this one, this is the portion that used to be at the back. So I move it out so that it will create an empty space here for more storage. I'll, I'll reverse the chassis later so for you to see. Now let's install the graphics card first. So all you have to do is make sure that you remove the two uh, cover here. So the cover should should match your PCIe slot where it will be connected. So usually it's on the second and the third, depending on your GPU or motherboard layout. So this is uh, the graphics card. So let's install it. So make sure you you line it up properly, and you will hear a a tick click. Make sure it's installed properly. So you have to screw it up to support the graphics card. So you have the thumb screws here. So I suggest you first use your your fingers and tighten tighten it up later on. So you can actually use your your screwdriver for thumb screws. Okay. So no need to use your fingers to tighten because you have a blister. Okay, and the next thing you have to do is plug in the power. So you have a 2-8 pin here. So I already routed some cables. This is the two PCIe cables. So make sure you have um, prepared in your modular power supply. So you have to, to plug it in here. Carefully lining up. Sure you hear a click and everything should be nice and tight okay so you can pull back the cable to make it neat, nice and neat okay so now we're going to take a look at the how to install the optical drive here on top so you won't be able to see it from this end so let me just turn around the, the chassis Okay, so let me just point the, the way to mount this one. I had a hard time figuring out initially how to mount the 5.25 inch drive. So this bracket actually, uh, you have to remove this initially and from the front, Okay, so you have to remove this front. Okay. So you notice you, you might feel that it's not the right orient or right uh what do you call this right way to insert it, but it's really like uh, uh not 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 totally flat on this level no so don't worry because you still have a chassis so you have to remove the, the bracket here and reverse the orientation okay so i can be able to plug it like this. so this used to be uh, at the front but notice the the screw you can only hold it from one hole. No? So in the other side, you remove this panel. There's a panel here so that you can screw the other, other end. Okay, so I also did uh, I remove the, 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 the panel here, move it to storage mode so I can put in more drives here. Now, initially I had a hard time figuring out how to fix this, or how to use this hard disk drive bay. I noticed that the holes are pretty big and how do you 
how do you patch all of these uh, all of the drive to the, the hose so this is how it looks like let me just show it to you so you have to have the grommets you have to have the grommets okay you can find that in your fractal design case and you have to insert here and slide it to the back okay let me demonstrate so I have here some grommets okay so you have to use this one then slide it let me get an empty one so this one huh? so put the grommets here the, 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 the hard disk dampener so you can slide the dampeners here so then then you put the screws here so this will be your the way how to use this hard drive tray now it took me 30 minutes to figure out because i don't know where to mount the hard drive all along there should be a rubber uh what we call this the rubber dampener hard drive dampener and you use this kind of screw okay to mount from here okay already put uh, four screws in so let's bring it back to the drying bay so for this one just use your thumb okay and I already mounted uh, a SATA power supply so depending on your cables you just find your the right cable and plug it in I did not plug, I also plugged in the SATA ports here before I installed the graphics card in the SATA slots so that you'll be able to, uh, uh, I have two drives so I have two, two cables so initially I will not insert this one because I don't want uh, the drives confusing me when I install Windows so all you have to do here is just plug it here in the bottom beside the power and you're good to go all right so basically i did some basic i did i did some basic cable management already so you have these straps to hoist your cables and i still i still have to improve on this one there's a, 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 a what you call this a, a, a way for you to hook zip locks here zip zip ties there so that you can hang this one to make it all neat and tidy and you have a you have a shroud here here in the bottom to cover it let me show you quickly so you have a shroud here cover to make your your build cleaner and nicer okay but i will not close this yet because i still have some tinkering to do and at least the basic are already discussed now in this case you will have multiple drive base you have 3.5 ssds two SSDs here and you can also mount uh, multiple trays like this each floor you can mount trays like this for up to I think eight hard drives and in, in the bay okay and you have also a multi-function bracket here at the back you can remove this okay so you, you can uh, put this somewhere else if you need to okay so that's it from the back and I think we are done with our build and we want to test it out and by booting it up and see how it all fits in. Okay. So let me just turn this back. Many hours later. So here we are. It's finished and I'm very proud of myself. I was able to build this computer on my own. I built computers before, but it's been a while. It's around more than 10 years already since I built my last computer. So many technologies has changed. I had to research everything again, but I challenge you, uh, my viewers, if you reach it this far, uh, try to build your own computer. It's gonna be rewarding and you'll learn a lot. Now, building this computer from ground up has been very fulfilling. 
and I like the build quality of this case even though I had some uh, issues on the how to install the hard drives on the hard drive tray or the, how to install the 5.25 millimeter optical drive uh, trying to figure it out how but uh, you get you'll get to figure it out no so I was able to to uh, assemble of the all of these on my own and if you're looking to to ask somebody else to assemble this here maybe they will charge you 2500 or maybe 3000 pesos uh, around forty dollars to fifty dollars just to help you assemble but i'm sure you can do it if you have some technical know-how and or if you have a friend who can help you ask your friend to build it with you okay and so far the parts have been working well and i did the test installation of windows uh, 10 pro and if you're interested to look at uh, to to watch part three we'll be having an installation of the windows a step by step on how to install windows and the different softwares that i will be installing in this rig for my use now i'm excited to use this already it's been uh, a while so there so thank you very much for watching my video and i hope you learned something if you have any questions or about this rig or, or how i built them or how to build using Fractal Define 7, please feel free to put your questions in the comments below. And please do like and subscribe. And thank you very much for supporting my channel. And thank you very much to my wife for very supportively uh, helping me out in this building PC process. Huh? So please like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.